Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweet and a tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can easily sharpen your images using frequency separation. I know I said we are going to learn how to sharpen images using frequency separation. Oftentimes we use frequency separation to do skin retouching, but in this tutorial we're going to use it to sharpen images and get sharp images at the end of our retouching process. So usually sometimes we tend to end up with slightly blurry images and we want to sharpen them after retouching them so we just want to get the image from looking uh, like this just look at it and that's the after before after but just using frequency separation for this tutorial and if at all you find the video helpful make sure that you hit the like button on this video so that youtube can push and recommend this video to so many people out there who are interested in learning about the same or in photography in general so you can see the before and this is what we're going to be achieving at the end of this tutorial. So I'm just going to delete this uh, so that we can sharpen the image as we go along and we understand each and every step. So usually frequency separation divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. So in the high frequency layer we have the textures and in the low frequency layer usually we have our colors. So I'm just going to create those two layers. Make sure the background layer is selected and press Ctrl or Command j twice or if i told you i've been retouching and you have a couple of layers below you can simply create a stamp visible layer by pressing shift alternate ctrl e on the keyboard then if at all you have mark you can press shift option command e on the keyboard create a stamp visible layer then create two copies from that stamp visible layer by pressing ctrl or command j so we're just going to double click and name that to low frequency and we're going to name this layer into high frequency so in this case of sharpening it doesn't matter if i told your image is either 8 bit or 16 bit because the process is going to be the same at the end of it all so i'm just going to come and i'm going to hide the high frequency and select the low frequency layer and this time around we're going to be using a slightly low radius without taking emphasis uh, with the skin textures just come to filter we're going to come to blend come to gush and blur and for this case we're going to be using a radius of between between 2.5 to 3 so i'm just going to be using three pixels for this image i'm just going to come and press ok so this is more the value that we have just put right there is basically more like when you are trying to put uh, the sharpening mask or sharpening the image through the sharpening mask or even the high pass filter so make sure you don't take it overboard that is why we have put a radius that is around three pixels and after that we're just going to come right here to the high frequency and now activate it by turning on the plus icon then come to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image it's going to open for you this other window or dialog box so make sure layer you select the low frequency layer and this actually doesn't matter so much the blend mode doesn't matter so you can either turn it to add or subtract but usually most people prefer subtract so let's use subtract for this tutorial but at the end of it all it is going to give you the same results like a people that use uh 16 bit images and those that use add as a blend mode for this step so make sure the opacity is at a hundred percent after selecting the blend mode as subtract preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale has to be two and offset 128 and you can see the textures are on this gray kind of layer and you can see they are the ones that we are going to remain with in our sharpened image so make sure invert is not checked and make sure you come and press ok right here so when you press ok the image is going to appear on this gray kind of layer and right now what we want to do we just want to basically remove or remove this gray kind of layer so in order to do that the blend mode that is going to remove it is going to be linear light. so just come and select linear light and you'll get back the image so right now we just want to see if at all we still have the same image at the end of separating both or the image or at the end of separating the image into the high frequency layer or the low frequency layer so just select both layers and press ctrl or command g on the keyboard to group them 
So I'm just going to double click and name this to frequency separation. I know you may be wondering why is the image not looking sharp at this point. So this is not all. We don't do only this. Remember, if I told you want the image to look sharp at the end of it all, we want to add contrast into the dark areas. So usually the darkest areas of an image are the ones that really portray or prove that an image is indeed a sharp image. So in order to do that, we're just going to come in our group and we select the high frequency layer. So with the high frequency layer selected, we're just going to create a curves adjustment layer on top of the high frequency layer. So in Photoshop, most times when you want to apply a layer on top of a given layer, select that layer and you can go ahead and apply another layer on top of it. So just want to apply another layer on top of our high frequency layer. So just come to adjustments and come and create a curves adjustment layer. So right now we have the curves adjustment layer. So what we are going to do for this case, we're just going to come and simply make a midpoint right in the curves adjustment layer. So make sure it is very or it is in the middle. In order to prove that, just come and set or type in 128, 128 right here and press enter and make sure the output is also 128 and that is going to make that as a midpoint. So right now the image is still not looking sharp or it is having less levels of sharpness. So in order to intensify this, remember sharpness or sharpening is really more evident in the dark pixels of the image. You're just going to come right here and make a midpoint in the shadow areas and simply, or you're just going to make a point and simply drag that down. So as you're dragging it down, you can see it is going to make the image darker, but we don't want it to affect the color levels or all the layers within the group and below. So what we have to do, just come and click on this clipping mask like icon right here. So make sure you click on it so it can only affect our textures or the details. So you can either click right here or you can as well come and hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and click between the curves adjustment layer and the high frequency layer and it's going to create a clipping mask for you. So we are just going to continue dragging this and as you're doing this you're going to notice that the image is going to, the more you drag it down the sharper the image is going to get. So usually as you're taking this down you're going to notice that this other side of the curve is also going to follow the S format and sometimes it tends to create fringing around the edges of the brightest areas of the image so we don't want that to happen so i'm just going to make a point right here and drag this down so that we can avoid that kind of fringing that is going to affect the image so right now we can now come and even sharpen the image more just like that by darkening the darker pixels in the image so let me show you a quick before and after for the sharpening so far but this is not all for the tutorial Look at the before, after, before and after. Just look at how sharp the image is now looking. So remember, when we are sharpening images, we want the sharpening to affect specific areas. We don't, sharp, we don't want to sharpen, for example, the lips and maybe some parts of the hair. So in order to do that, we're just going to make sure the white layer mask is selected and press Ctrl or Command I to hide the sharpening from affecting the overall image. I'm just going to close this. And when you press command I, it is going to create a black layer mask that is going to hide the sharpening that was affecting the image. And we're going to come under the brushes, right click and get our brush tool. And the settings have to be, the hardness has to be 0%, opacity and the flow of 100%. And make sure you have white on the foreground right here. Or you can reset if I told you have other colors right here by clicking on these two small boxes. And you can switch in between black and red by using X on the keyboard or you can use this arrow. So make sure white is on top. And remember in Photoshop, white reveals and black eyes. So we want to reveal using a white brush what was hidden behind this black mask. So with that, you can just come and paint on the areas that you want to have the sharpening. So you can see these areas are now getting sharper and sharper as we are doing this or as you are painting the sharpening on those areas. You can see it 
is just sharpening the areas that we are trying to paint on so like i said don't sharpen the hair because it is going to look a little bit awkward or weird so i think you have to paint on areas that you feel like you feel like you should sharpen in your images so this is the before after before after so basically this is how to sharpen your images using frequency separation and if at all you have found this video helpful don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have watched and learned something new from this channel ronix from Moon's photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing shows and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating